What's up everyone, welcome back to another video and in this one I'm going to show you how to set up VS Code for Python. So VS Code is a new text editor slash IDE. It's from Microsoft and it's essentially a more user friendly and scaled down version of Visual Studios. So it's very popular, there's been a lot of good things said about it, so I figured I'd try it out and show you how to get it set up. So let's get started. So before we begin the install, I'd like to point out that if you don't have Python installed, VS Code is not going to be able to run Python. The reason why I say this is because there was a lot of comments in the Atom tutorial where people simply didn't have Python installed. So the way you can check is just pull up a CMD window and just type Python. If a Python interpreter begins, then you're good. If you get something like Python is not recognized, then what you need to do is come to the Anaconda homepage, I'll link in the description, and just download Python 3.6, 64-bit version. Once you've installed that, then you're good to go. So now I'd like to take a moment and explain what I'm looking for from VS Code. So I'm basically looking for something to obviously run Python code, but some other features that I'm interested in is autocomplete. I also want linting, which means error highlighting. I also want auto formatting, which is auto pep8 on save. I'd like to have a mini map and some other extras such as themes, file icons, um, multi-line editing, fancy stuff like that. So I'm gonna show you how I set up VS Code with these features. So let's get started with the download. We'll come to the VS Code homepage, which I'll link in the description. We'll click this big green button. Our download will begin. And once it's done, we'll just click on the installer to begin. All right, and then we'll just work our way through this download. We'll hit accept, select the path, um, click next. Make sure you select add to path and install. When we click finish, we will get VS Code opening up for the first time. So right off the bat, we're greeted with this welcome page. And the first thing I'm gonna do is uncheck the show welcome page at start so we don't see it every time. And the first thing I wanna do is set up Python for VS Code. And in order to run Python code, we're going to need to install a package. So in VS Code, they're called extensions, and it's this little icon right here. So we click this bottom one for extensions, and then what we can do is search for the package we want. So the one that I'm gonna use for running Python code is called Code Runner. I'm going to click here to read more about it. I'm going to click here to begin the install. And I'm going to click this reload because you have to do that to activate. And then I'm going to pull up Code Runner again. And let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see better. So you can see here all the languages that it supports. And you'll see that Python's there. And you'll also see that the command to run Python code is Control-Alt-N. So the other thing that we're gonna need to do is restart VS Code before it works. So I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and close, then reopen. And then I have a, a sample file, which we can test it. So this is just a simple matplotlib plot. So I'm gonna do Control-Alt-N and boom, we get our expected output. So now I'd like to take a moment to show you the layout of VS Code. So right here is where we display our um, files, and you can see that we can, um, we can do multiple files. Like here, we have the same one split, and you can split it as many times as you want. Here's our output, where we can either do output of the file we're running. There's a problem reporter if we have linter set up, a debug console, and then a terminal with our PowerShell. So if we needed to say pip, inst pip install something like pep8, we could just run it right here, which is useful. Um, here, like I showed before, here's our extensions. Here's your debugger. Um, this is your git helper or git um, repository link stuff, which I haven't really used yet. Um, some search tools for searching through your document, and then your file explorer. There's also this little direct tweet to Twitter, which is uh, kind of cool. And you may also have noticed that there is a mini map here. And we also have scroll past the, um, the last line, which is something that isn't set up by default on um, Atom. So it is set up by default on VS Code. But I don't know if you can see, but this mini map is really small, um, which 
I haven't figured out how to make it any bigger, but yeah, we do have the mini map by default. So now I want to set up our autocomplete, our linting, and our pep8. And the good thing about that is it's all contained in one package. So what we do is come to our extensions and we come to the recommended. And what you'll see is the first one recommended is this Python.070. So you'll see that this one, I'll get the install going, is linting, debugging, IntelliSense, which is our autocomplete, code formatting, refactoring, unit tests, and a bunch more. So with this one, we're knocking out a bunch of stuff off the list. So again, we're gonna have to click reload to activate, and we've got it set up. So by default, this one does the, um, the linter that it uses is PyLint. So it's, um, for example, let me show you it in action. So I believe we should get a linter error for this import and for this name. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll look into that more. So right off the bat, we get hover over feature. So we're getting, um, we're basically getting the doc string from like NumPy and we can read more on it. Um, show, basically you can hover over anything and get the, um, the doc string for it. So that's good. Let's see if we have autocomplete set up. So if I do NumPy and then something like a range, yep. So we've got autocomplete already set up. So in order to tweak with the auto formatting and the linting, what I'm gonna do is come to File, Preferences, and then Settings. And then I'm going to close this and the output. So what this is, is your settings.json file. And then here are a list of all the settings. So for example, here is commonly used ones. So what you can do if you wanna add this to your settings file, you can just click here and then for example, you can um, change the values and it'll move it over into your settings folder or your settings file. So if I wanna change the font size, I can click edit, copy to settings, and then I can do say 16, hit save, and then boom, everything gets moves to 16. So those are the commonly used ones. And now what I'm gonna do is come down to the Python configuration ones. So you can see that, let's look for the linting stuff first. So linting is enabled and um, like there's a bunch of different linter options. So there's prospector, PyLint, which is enabled by True, PEP8, Flake8, and um, PyDoc style. So what I'll do is let's, um, let's enable Flake8 since that's the one we used in Atom. And we've got PyLint already enabled, so we'll keep that. So you can see we've got Lint on text change set to true, so it should, um, it should highlight our errors as we're typing. And it also has Lint on save set to true. So I'm just gonna keep scrolling, and um, here's a bunch of uh, category stuff for each of the linters, which we're not gonna touch. Um, these are the paths, which we also don't need to touch. And until we get to those are the arguments, these are basically um, ways to ignore certain errors, which I'll show you later. So for the formatter, I want to have it set to auto pep8. So what I'll do is select that. You can see it moves over here. And I'll leave these alone. And then here's the one I want, formatting on save. So what I'll do is set that to true. So let's go ahead and test this out. So we'll come over here and you can see I've got a problem where um, according to PEP8, I should only have two blank spaces here. So let's just go ahead and hit save. And you can see that it, boom, move the move this up. And now you can also see that we're getting um, linter errors. So we're getting a PyLint error right here, missing, a, missing doc string and probably unused argument. So if I were to do something like this, just do some, just type a doc string. The error should go away. I'll hit save. Yep, error goes away. And let's just say return hello. Hit save and boom, the error goes away. Um, so we're getting a few other ones. So what I've noticed is PyLint is pretty strict. So you can see it, it wants a, um, it wants a doc string at the top. Um, it doesn't like these single letter variables, you know, invalid, invalid names. 
So uh, PyLint is pretty strict. So you might want to um, play with some other linters. Like I said, you've got PyLint, you've got PEP8, you've got Flake8. Um, I enabled Flake8 and it's not showing. That's one thing that I kind of don't like about VS Code is the linters, I don't know, sometimes you're setting them and they don't seem to be doing anything. So, um, but yeah, we've got the auto formatting on save and we do have linting going on. So we can check those off the list. So let's say I want to ignore certain errors. For example, this one right here, missing module doc string C0111. Let's say I don't want that error showing up. So what I can do is come to my user settings, come back down to the Python configuration. And what I'm looking for is a list, a pylint list, uh, come down to here. Py, Python linting pylint args. So I'll just click here, copy settings, and the command for it is dash dash disable, and then we give it the code. We say equals C0111. Hit save, and then when we save our document, you can see that that error is gone. So if I wanna also add this one, C0103, I can just um, do comma C0103, hit save, come back here, save the file, and that error is gone now too. So that's how you ignore certain linter errors that bug you. So now I'd like to show you an extension that lets you run Jupyter commands and get outputs right in your IDE. So the one that I'm looking for is just called Jupyter. So I'm gonna go click and install, and you'll see that basically it, it allows you to create a, a notebook and then it will create an output right, um, not in line, but directly to the right in like a little separate window. So I'll go ahead and um, activate it. And the way you do that is, let me uh, get rid of that. And let me close this off. So the command for it is um, we add a hashtag and then percent percent. And what this does, it gives us this little run cell button so when we click on it, what we need to do is start a new notebook. So you can see here that it's starting a new notebook. It's gonna start the kernel. And now we've got the Python kernel identified and boom, we get the output right here. So if we have a pen results, if we run it again, we're just gonna get the same thing again. But if we clear and then uncheck append, then run the cell and then run it again, um, we don't, it doesn't keep growing. It'll just uh, clear and create another one. So that's how you can get some uh, Jupyter functionality right in VS Code. So the next thing I wanna do is install a file icons package. And actually by default, there's already one installed, but um, if you want a slightly cooler one, you can just search file icons. And the one I picked was this one here. So I'll go ahead, click, get it installing, click this reload button to activate. And the way you enable it is, let me just scoot this up so you can see a little better. You'll go to the file icons theme, and it's this one here, file icons. And you can check by going to your um, your file explorer. So you can see here, my DLLs have a little, I don't know, icon here. The Python ones didn't change, but all these other ones like HTML and um, UI, those ones are a little bit cooler looking. So that's your file icons um, package. So the last thing I wanna show you is how to change your themes. So one way you can do it is you can right click, let me bring this up so you can see better. Right click, go to color themes, and here's your options. So um, if you like Sublime, you can go with Monokai. And also a nice way of um, sifting through them is um, what you'll see is the um, your theme pops up here. And what we can do is just click here and then we get our options showing up. So Visual Studios Lite, um, there's this red, it's pretty intense, uh, Monokai dimmed. So right out of the box, it comes with a lot of options, but of course we can go download more. So um, one that I saw that was really nice was uh, this, it was a uh, Monokai, um, Monokai Cobalt, I think it was. Yeah, Monokai Cobalt. This one I thought was pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead, reload and I can just come here yeah, and select it here. So yeah, this is the one I've been uh, going with lately. 
I don't know, there's tons of options, so feel free to choose whichever one you like. And um, there's ways you can um, basically add some commands in here to tweak your, um, like say your font colors or all the little things. Um, I haven't um, I haven't spent a lot of time looking into it, but um, feel free to go check it out. If you find ways of changing it, uh, you know, feel free to comment in the in the comments below. So that's going to do it for this video. As you can see, we've downloaded VS Code, configured it to run Python code. We've installed all the familiar packages we like, such as autocomplete, auto formatting, linting, even some cool ones like the Jupyter package and the aesthetic things such as file icons and themes. Uh, my personal take is I think it's a really good editor. Uh, one weak spot is the linting. Uh, I feel like it's a little confusing because I enabled Flake 8 and it doesn't seem to be working, but either the problem will uh, fix itself or the, uh, the creators will fix it or maybe I'm using it wrong. But um, other than that, I think it's really cool. And yeah, so if you're using it and if you're using it some other way, you know, let me know what you think and let me know how you're using it. And if you like the video, give it a like. If you like the content you're seeing, hit the subscribe button. And yeah, don't forget the Facebook group if you guys want to chat more about it. And yeah, so I'll see you in the next one. Peace.